Hi everyone and welcome back to Apple Cottage. We were making cheeseburgers last night and I was reminded that somebody had asked me how I make my cheeseburgers so that they stay so nice and flat. Have you ever been to a barbecue and they've made up cheeseburgers and they become almost like this saucer-like ball instead of the flat beautiful cheeseburgers? When I was young my dad taught me how to make them that way and so I thought I would just show you. So I'm going to grab this is about a fourth of a pound to a third of a pound of hamburger. And I first form it in a ball. Then I'm going to press it down. Then the trick to it is, is I'm going to use my fingers moving it around. Let me move that camera even a little bit lower. And see how I'm making a ridge where it's lower here and higher on the sides. And you just work your way around, patting it. You can use your outside hand just as a guide to round it. And then you're going to make it as thick as you would like. Some people like their cheeseburgers thicker. Some people like them thinner. See how mine is? And when you do a close-up, can you see how that ridges in? It's a lower than what the center is, and it's much lower than what the sides are. And so I just go around using my fingers in the inside and the, my palm of my hand on the outside. And when that cooks, it will stay this shape and size. It won't shrink up. So I'm going to put that to the side. And let's do one more. And I like my cheeseburgers to be between a fourth and a third of a pound. So first we're making the ball. We're pressing it down. And then we're going to start to shape it. And in this video, I'm actually going to cook a cheeseburger so that you can see that it's staying. Now, all hamburger can be different. It has different amounts of fats or it's leaner than this other hamburger. And that can adjust it a little bit on the size, but it should never ball up. Um, it shouldn't look like this don't or um, shape like a saucer, you know, fat and sh shrink all up. You don't want that. Um, one of the other things that can add to that is if you're frying it at or grilling it at too high a temperature. The other trick that my dad had taught me was that, and this works with not just hamburger, it works with steak also. You want to turn it a lot of times. You want those juices going from one side to the other side. And it just gives you a much um, better tasting um, hamburger or steak. It's very well rounded. Um, flavor wise and I think you'll just really enjoy it more so I'm going to stop the video let's pull this one up too so you can see it see the ridge in there thickness is about the same and I'm going to just fry one of these up in my cast iron skillet my just my tiny cast iron skillet so I'll be right back now this is just my tiny cast iron skillet I have skillets that are cast iron in so many different sizes because I just love using cast iron. And at the end of the video, I'll actually show you just a photograph or a little quick video of my wall that has a lot of cast iron that I just hang because I use them so much, it's easier than having them in the cupboard. So I have my stove set on six, which is just above medium. And I'm letting it warm up a little bit before I put the, the hamburger in there. Now this size skillet is perfect for one or two eggs. So I'm going to put that right in there. And this will really give us a good gauge of it um, staying about the same size. There's a, approximately an inch and a half all the way around. So I'm just going to let that cook a little bit. I'll come back while it's in the middle of cooking and I'm flipping it. You should be able to hear it sizzling. 
I put salt and pepper on this side, so I'm going to flip it over for the first time. And again, I'm going to put some salt and pepper. And at these points, you could add garlic salt, basil, thyme, any kind of spices that you wanted. But I like to do it on both sides. So it's just going to cook a little bit more. And in the meantime, every few minutes, I'm going to flip it over. So our hamburger is frying. I've turned it a several times. I will let it cook just a little teeny bit longer. And then I'm going to add some cheese. Today I'm adding Tillamook Colby Jack, personal preference. Now if I was sauteing some mushrooms with that, I would also probably change my cheese to Swiss cheese. If I was going to put a slices of avocado in my bun with my cheeseburger, I would use a provolone. So depending on the way I make my cheeseburger, it can make a difference on what cheese I use. Joe likes um, the Colby Jack cheese. I like it too. So on this one, with the bun, I'm going to put some mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, and some homemade relish. Now as you can see, the cheese is all melted. And it was about a half inch all the way around. It might have shrunk to about three quarters of an inch all the way around. But that is a beauty of a cheeseburger. Now if it was a little warmer outside, I would have grilled that outside. And when I grill it, I find that you even have less shrinkage. So this is Sandy at Apple Cottage. I hope you have a great day. Enjoy a lunch. And I will see you again next time. Remember to like, subscribe, Share with the world and press that little bell so you get notifications. Here's my two cheeseburgers that are all fried up. They're beautiful. I can hardly wait to have lunch. So I'm just going to end this video with another um, little photograph of all of my cast iron pots and pans on my wall. And have a great day. Well, I tried to do a, just a photograph, but there's not enough room for me to get back far enough. So first little side note here's some of my drawings of motorcycles some of you might not know I'm also an artist so my first layer that great big bad boy is the one I use the most and I have one that's a little bit smaller the little space that's there was the one I was frying the hamburgers in this is my cast iron pie pan now that makes a mean apple pie in my pizza oven there's the little pans that I use when we're making pizzas, a griddle, copper pan. These are the best oven mitts. I use them when we're smoking, when we're using the pizza oven, when I'm baking. They'll withstand 600 degrees. There's a cast iron um, cornmeal so you can make cornbread. And then I have down here just some more flat ones, some pizza ovens, and a griddle. So that's my wall of fame.